Hey everyone, in this Fusion 360 video, I'm going to be sharing with you how to design a piece of flat pack furniture and really create a robust 3D model so that you can dynamically change your design on the go. As always, I'm going to be recording myself along the way so that you can listen to my thought process and even see the mistakes that I know I'm going to make. So let's get started. First, I'll right click at the top of my browser and create a new component for the seat of my stool. By doing this, I'm creating a much cleaner timeline at the end of my workflow. I can right click on the seat and activate it, and now I'm working just within this seat component. I'll go ahead and create a sketch on this bottom plane, and I'll draw out a 14 inch diameter circle. So I can click and draw, and after drawing my 14 inch circle, I'll stop my sketch, and I can now extrude it to the thickness I want. I'm planning to use 3 quarter inch plywood, but it'll most likely be about 0.72, so that looks good. And I can go ahead and return to the top level of my assembly. What I can do now is create some parameters for some values that I know I'll be using throughout the design. One of these might be the seat diameter, so I'll set, create that as a variable. Next, what I can do is create a very important variable, wood thickness, and I can set that equal to the value of 0.72. So now instead of these features just pointing at the number, I can point them towards the variable, so that if I change any of these, my entire design will update. So I can vary this to wood thickness, and we're all set. Next what I can do is work on creating a leg component. So I'll right click at the top of my browser, create a new component, and I'll call this leg, and I can now right click on it and activate it. You'll see that I'm now just working on this component, and I can create a sketch on this side plane. What's nice is that I can still interact with other pieces of geometry. So I'll use project to project in some existing geometry, and I can now draw some construction lines. So I'll draw one line that goes from the origin straight down, and I'll go ahead and repeat that command and draw one straight out. And I'll select both of them, right click, and choose normal slash construction to turn them into construction lines. Now I want the legs of this stool to extend just out to the same uh, diameter here of the stool, so I'll draw a line that draw, goes straight down from these projected edges, just like this, and I'll dimension that to be the height of the stool that I want. And I know that it is 450 millimeters. I know I'm bouncing between units, but I just know that I want a stool. Generally, it should be 450 millimeters. So I can enter that, select the curve, and turn it into a construction line. Now what I can do is start drawing out the legs. So I want the leg to be 3 inches across. So I'll draw that line, dimension it to be 3 inches. Next, I'll draw a line that extends up to the base of the seat. And I know I want this to be 2 inches from the outside of the seat. So I'll draw it rather arbitrary, and then come in here and dimension this distance to be 2 inches. Next, I want the middle portion of the leg to be 6 inches below the base of the seat. So I'll draw a line straight across, and I can dimension that distance to be 6 inches. So dimension, there we go. So click both my lines and enter in 6 inches. Now I don't know the length that this line should be, but I know that if I draw it from the end of this line to the end of this line, what I want is for both of these to be parallel. So what I can do is select my parallel constraint and click the two lines that I want to be parallel. You'll see that the length of this line adjusts in order to solve everything else correctly. The next thing I want is part of this leg to extend up through the uh, seat of this stool so that I can put it all together without any fasteners. So what I'll do next is draw a line and I'll first draw a line out across and just draw the rough shape. And I'll draw another line from the end of that segment up. And then another line straight across just like that. Now what I can do is I can dimension these lines that I've just drawn. I want that to be the same value as the wood thickness. So I'll enter in wood thickness. And I can now dimension this curve by left clicking and holding. And I can dimension that to be 2.5 inches. And you'll see that it shifted everything to the left when really I wanted everything to lie here on the origin. So what I can do is draw one more construction line straight up. And then I can constrain the end of this line to be on that line. So let me go ahead and right click and fix both of these so they don't go anywhere. And I can now choose coincident and apply a coincident constraint between that point and this line. And now everything adjusts properly. What I can do now is mirror everything about my construction geometry. So I'll choose mirror, and I'll go ahead and pick the lines that I want. So that curve, 
this one, left click and hold, and pick the one that I want. And I can go around and select the geometry that I like. I'll mirror it about this line. And now we have the profile that we need. Looks like I forgot one, so let me go ahead and mirror this line about this right here. And now we have the profiles. I'm just going to turn this one into a construction line so that I have one clean profile here. It looks like we have one more line to turn to a construction one, so let me go ahead and pick that and make that construction. There we go. I'll stop my sketch, and one last thing I'll do is I'll create one more parameter here, and I'll call that a stool height, and I'll set that to be 450 millimeters, not inches, so millimeters. Go ahead and select millimeters for my units, and instead of just being the number here, I will type in stool height. So what I can do now is extrude this profile out, so I'll choose Extrude, select my profile, and enter in the value that I want. Now I want this to be symmetrical, so I'll change the direction to symmetric, but you'll see that it extrudes it by a value of wood thickness, or 0.72 inches, on both sides. So I should really change this distance to wood thickness divided by 2 to keep everything aligned. I'll go ahead and return to the top level of my design here, and one thing that I want to check is that when I change these values, everything else adjusts. So if I change the seat diameter to 16, You'll see everything grows properly. If I change the stool height to 500, everything looks like it's working just fine. One last thing I'll check is what if I change the wood thickness to half inch, and you'll see everything work, turns out just great. So what I can do now is right click on the leg, select copy, and I can now paste it. I have two options for paste, paste and paste new. I want to select paste new so that the changes I make to one of them is, doesn't affect the second leg. So I'll choose paste new, rotate it 90 degrees, and I have the basis for my stool already. What I need to do now is create some slots in both of these legs, one at the top and one at the bottom, so that these can all fit together. I'll right click on leg one, activate it, and I'll hide the other components so they're not in the way. I'll go ahead and create a sketch on this face. It doesn't really matter what face I select. And I'll go ahead and hide the body just so I have a nice clean sketch profile to work with. I'll draw a construction line from midpoint to midpoint. I'll select it and turn it into a construction line. And I can now start drawing the slot that I want. So I'll draw again one line straight down and one straight across. And what I can do later on is I can then dimension these to whatever I want. So let me go ahead and draw this straight across one more time, a line from here to here. And I can draw it off center and go ahead and make it horizontal just like that. I'll dimension these. So I want this value, if you think about it, this is half of the wood thickness. Actually, we'll make that wood thickness, there we go, half the wood thickness. And I'll dimension this, and this is really half of the distance from here to here. So we know it's six inches from bottom to this point, and the wood thickness there. So I'm going to say six plus wood thickness divided by two. And there we go. What I can do now is mirror these two curves about my center line, and we're just about ready to go. One thing I need, though, is I know that I want these to actually fit together, and I need to create some clearance. So what I can do now is create my own user parameter. I'm going to call it clearance, and I'm going to give myself 10 thousandths of an inch just to work with all around my design. So if I go down here, we can look at some of the parameters that I just entered. So for this sketch, I have wood thickness divided by 2 as that line. I'm actually going to put some parentheses around that and tack on that clearance variable. Now you can see I have some wiggle room to work with. I'll go ahead and click OK, and I'll stop my sketch. I'll turn the bodies back on, and I'll extrude this by a value of negative wood thickness. And now you'll see it performs that cut just as we want it. I'll go ahead and return to the top level. I'll go ahead and show the second leg, and I'll right-click and activate that component. And now we're going to recreate the same exact thing on this side, just on the bottom instead of the top. So let me go ahead and hide the bodies folder. I'll draw another line, midpoint to midpoint. We might go a little bit faster this time because it's the second time around. So I'll turn it into a construction line. I'll draw one more line from this point up and that point across. And I can now dimension this 
to be parentheses wood thickness divided by 2 plus clearance. And I'll dimension this to be that same distance that we had on the other side. So this is 6 plus wood thickness divided by 2. There we go. I'll go ahead and mirror these two lines. So I'll click those about this line right here. I can click stop sketch, show my bodies, and I'll extrude this by value of negative wood thickness. I can go ahead and return to the top level, and by pasting new, you'll see that I'm able to have two different leg designs and they don't affect each other. So if I hide this one, we have a slot at the bottom, and if I show this one, I have a slot at the top so that they fit together perfectly. The next thing I'm going to do is create a cutout in the seat for this to all fit together, and I could use a boolean operation, but I'd rather sketch it. So I'll activate the seat component and hide the legs, and I'll go ahead and create a sketch on this top surface. Again, I'm going to draw some construction lines to help me along the way. So I'll draw this line, and I'll draw this line, and I'll select both of them, make sure that they're perfectly horizontal or perfectly vertical, just like that. I'll turn them both into construction lines so they don't interfere with any profiles that I create. And now I'm just going to draw this shape that we see over here. So I'll draw one line that extends out, and I'll extend this down by some distance. As you see, I'm not dimensioning anything right now. I'm drawing it and then dimensioning later. So I'll dimension this to be a similar value that we see. We have wood thickness divided by 2 plus clearance. That way we have a little bit of room. And then lastly, what I can do is dimension this distance to be 2.5 plus clearance, again, giving us some room. And the last dimension that I have is this distance right here, which is going to be the same value as we had before. Wood thickness divided by 2 plus clearance. And there we go. All that's left is to mirror this about that center line. So I'll select those lines, mirror it, and now I have one of them. And a little trick here is I can use actually a circular pattern to pattern all four of these about the center. And if I change the quantity to 4, everything should line up perfectly as you see just like that. So I'll stop the sketch and I can extrude this down. And another way I can do this, I could type in the value negative wood thickness or I could say extrude this down to this surface right here and when that wood thickness changes that extrusion will change as well. So let me go back to the top level. And as you can see if I show both of my leg components and I look at it from the top we do have some clearance built in here and everything fits together just perfectly. Now the very last thing I need to do is add in some specialty fillets so that I can actually manufacture this uh, using a CNC machine. So if we look here at the top of the seat, you'll see that I have these internal corners that I wouldn't be able to reach with a round cutting tool. You can imagine a CNC trying to cut this shape out and I can't get that perfect 90 degree angle in the corner. So what I'm going to do is actually activate the seat create a sketch, and create what are known as some dog bone fillets here, so that the cutting tool can actually go into the corner, come back out, and everything can fit together perfectly. I'll first go ahead and create one more user parameter, and I'll call this tool diam, and this represents the diameter of my cutting tool. I'll set it right now to quarter inch, and click OK. What I'm going to do now is draw one construction line from the midpoint down to this point right here. And I'll turn that into a construction line. And I'll draw one more line out this way. Let me zoom in. And again, I'm going to draw an arbitrary line. And I'll dimension this to be 45 degrees because a dog bone fillet needs to come out here at a 45 degree angle. I'll turn this to a construction line. And I'll draw one more circle. And I'll draw it so that it's coincident on this line. And the diameter is tool diam. There we go. And now it's constrained to be on this line. And now the key step is that I need to dimension the distance from this corner to the middle of my cutting tool lengthwise to be half of the cutting tool, or the tool, di tool radius, rather. So I'll set this to tool diam divided by 2. And now we'll see that it lines up perfectly. I'll go ahead and mirror this line about this construction line. I'll click Stop Sketch. And what I can do now is extrude these six profiles down by a value of negative wood thickness. So let me rotate for a clear view. Negative wood thickness. And I want to perform a cut. 
And now you'll see that the cutting tool can actually get here into the corner and everything can fit together. One last step is to create a pattern of these for all of the other corners. So being that I'm recreating a feature, that's going to be into the Create menu, Pattern, and Circular Pattern. And what objects do I want to pattern? Well, I'll just pattern those faces about this central axis, and how many do I want? I want four of them. And you'll see that when I click OK, it creates them just as I want them. So if I'm somewhere where maybe they're not using uh, inches or using millimeters, and they tell me they're using a six millimeter cutting tool. I can change this to six millimeters and you'll see they change. They tell me they're using a half inch, that will change as well. That's a little bit too big, so I'll drop it back down to a quarter. I'll go ahead and return to the top level of the assembly so we can see how everything fits together. And as you can see right here, I have these nice dog bone fillets so that everything fits together. If I wanted to go one extra step, what I might do is add that clearance variable to my tool diameter. So let me go ahead and do that. So my tool diameter, it is exactly 0.25, but I might want to tack on plus clearance. That way I have just a little bit of more breathing room so that everything fits together and, not, and I'm not scraping edges of wood together to fit this all together. So there you have it. As you can see, these dogwood fillets are really useful. If I hide the seat, I'll show you the other areas where we, where we would need to add them. So you need to add them in any internal corner. So I would add them right here and on these corners that you see right here. I'll spare you the time because it's the exact same steps of drawing a line at a 45 degree angle and placing your cutting tool there. As one final step, I want to show you just how robust this model is. I can go to my parameters and come down here to the bottom. And if someone tells me, you know, we're not using 3 quarter inch wood, we're using 18 millimeters, I can type in 18 millimeters, everything changes. Maybe again, we're using a 6 millimeter cutting tool. There we go. And if someone tells me, hey, I want a stool that's actually 500 millimeters tall, I can enter that in just like that. So as you can see, creating a really robust 3D model pays off both during the design process so that you can quickly iterate on your design by just changing one or two values, and most importantly, when you go to manufacture your piece, it may not work the first time. You might need to change the clearance that you set up. The wood thickness might be slightly different than what you initially thought it might be. And this allows you to change things on the fly and really create a real product very easily. So if you have any questions about any of this, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. If you like these kinds of videos where I walk through my thought process, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to reach out to me directly, you can tweet me anytime at Taylor underscore Stein. Thanks for watching.